So in this video, I'm going to show you how to take $3 an hour virtual assistants and turn them into highly trained appointment setters. And before I actually show you the hiring filtration and training process, I want to talk a little bit about why you need a virtual assistant or any team member for that matter. Okay, so I hate to break it to you, but you know, you're never going to build something amazing by yourself. All the biggest companies, they're built by basically organizations who have, you know, multiple departments with multiple team members. Okay. So when you're viewing running an agency, you shouldn't think it's going to be any different. And if you want to build something amazing, you're going to need a team. And if you've ever wondered why some people just scale infinitely faster than others, it's because they use leverage and leverage allows you to get more output. From the same input and if you guys know who naval is he's a billionaire who i'm not joking when i say this basically invested in every single blue chip company at a very early stage he says there's four main types of leverage okay so first type of leverage is capital so example we can take money we put it into paid ads we acquire clients a lot faster than others getting more more output for the same input leverage point number two is using people we can pay an appointment setter nine dollars a day to for three hours, send hundreds of DMs and handle objections and book calls for us. You know, number three, we have software slash code. We can sign up for instantly and send hundreds of cold email every single day that are automated. You know, number four, media, we can make a video sales letter once and it's gonna pre-sell and warm up every single prospect that we book a call with, right? So these are all four, uh, these are all four forms of leverage and these all allow you to get more output from the same input. And the secret to scaling agencies into the multiple five figure per month range, multiple six figure too, as fast as possible is by using all four forms of leverage. And it sounds super simple, but most people are only using maybe one, if any, right? Which most people are just using software and that's it, right? So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to leverage leverage type number two, which is people through highly trained $3 an hour appointment setters. Okay. So it's time to become a real business owner. Okay. So I want to answer a couple questions that I know are going to come up before we get into the training. So the first one is when should you hire a VA? And honestly, I think you should hire a VA as soon as you have 300 to $400 per month to spare, regardless of how many clients you have. Even if you have zero clients, I think you should hire a VA, right? Um, and go listen to any interview from a high level agency owner. So for example, Matt Shields. And when, when these high level agency owners are asked, how they would scale if starting over, they almost always say hiring people as soon as possible and putting money back into the agency as soon as possible, right? And the first logical hire, in my opinion, is a virtual assistant who makes sure that your calendar is never empty, okay? And the day you start thinking like a business owner instead of a contractor, it's the day you're gonna start winning, right? And I think I fell into this trap pretty early on too, but I see a lot of agency owners, they have three or four clients and they're doing all the work. Like they obviously have the cash flow, yet they're still doing all the work. They're not hiring. They're still sending hundreds of DMs. When when they have more than they have a couple thousand dollars per month at their disposal, they're still sending DMs all day. It's absolutely ridiculous, right? And even if you're still gonna send DMs yourself manually, you, even if you have the money to pay a VA, you still should. Now you have twice the manpower, right? And then if you need to go build out an amazing service, you know that sales calls are still being booked. Okay. Um, Question number two, where should you place your VA? So I'd recommend putting them on Instagram or Facebook. Like this is where you're gonna get the highest output, the most calls, the most leads, etc. But you know, you can also put a VA to manage your instantly account so they can scrape new leads for you, relaunch campaigns. So instead of you having to scrape new leads and reload campaigns every couple of weeks, they just do this for you, right? And then they also manage all the cold email positive replies, and then they actually turn those positive replies into book calls for you, right? So if you have if you have enough for two VAs, I'd get one for Instagram and Facebook, who works three hours a day, they send DMs all day, that's what I'm gonna show you how to do today, and getting another who makes sure that your cold email campaigns are always live, and that those leads are actually turning into booked appointments, right? So I know there's going to be one dude in the comment who, 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 if I didn't talk about this, he'd be like, Oh, but I can just use my, my Chrome extension, my friend connector, pro Facebook, Instagram automation. 
Yeah, yeah look, I, I love automations as much as the next agency owner, but it's, they, they just don't get you the results as a human, right? Like outreach software will just never get you the same result as a human, especially for Facebook and Instagram, okay? So all your extension can do is send a first message based uh, to a list of people based on keywords. But a virtual assistant, they can actually hand pick the most qualified leads, send them a personalized message, continue the conversation, handle objections, actually book the appointment on your calendar and much more. Okay. So not only will a virtual assistant have a much higher response rate, a much higher booking rate than any automation software, but they handle hundred percent of the job, right? So your automation, if you go eat lunch, you still have to come back to your automation and turn it on and respond to people and handle objections and book call where you can go eat lunch and your VA says, guess what? I just booked you three calls right? Um, while you were eating lunch, while you were talking to your clients, while you were building out an amazing service, right? Um, so that's kind of why that's the answer to that question. Uh, the last one is what country has the best virtual assistants? This is something that is very overlooked. People, I, I think this is, this plays all the role in, you know, in making decisions on where to source your virtual assistants, right? A lot of people go to Fiverr. A lot of people go to Upwork. If they thought about this, they probably wouldn't go there. Okay. So without a doubt, the best virtual assistants come from the Philippines. This is because they are highly educated and they have the highest English literacy in Asia. They're also some of the best people to work with because Filo Filipino cultural norms promotes hard work, generosity, loyalty, and dedication, right? They, they are some of the hardest workers. That's just their culture. That's what they're used to. They feel like they have to work as hard as possible. They're very generous. They're very loyal and they're very dedicated, okay? And specifically, the currency conversion rate, it allows you to, you know, actually get extremely high quality workers for just $3 an hour. Whereas if you're hiring $3 an hour VAs from somewhere else, they're not going to be as high quality as the Philippines. Okay. Um, and they're some of the most loyal people that you'll ever meet. So it's like, out of all your employees, your Filipino VAs, they're going to be with you the longest, right? So your, your sales rep, they might leave uh, after a couple months, you know, your media buyer, they might leave after a couple months, your VA will stay with you as long as you need them. Um, just because that's their culture. They're very loyal people. That's how they're raised up. Okay. So that's why in my opinion, the Philippines is the best country to source virtual assistance from. So that's kind of what I built this process around. Okay. So overview of the hiring and training process. So I've created an extremely streamlined process for hiring virtual assistants and turning them into rock star appointment setters for my agency. The process consists of eight steps and it ensures you get one of the best VAs for the position possible. We're going to be leveraging automations to filter out multiple applicants before they even start to take interviews. Okay. So a lot of people, they'll tell you to go to Upwork, create a job post, uh, look at the applications, interview 10 people, then choose someone, right? And that's good if you're hiring a VA to scrape leads or input stuff in spreadsheets, super you know, tedious stuff like that. But when you're hiring an appointment setter, you wanna do a little bit more filtering. You wanna do a little bit more qualifying, right? Because the appointment setting role, for them to be really good at it, it requires a little higher level of competency than is required from another job, such as scraping leads, right? And to make it as streamlined and automated as possible, you know, I've actually created a system where we can we can source applicants. Uh, there's multiple automations that ensure that they get filtered. So then by the time you actually are conducting interviews, you've already nailed down 100 applicants to the three most qualified. Then you just interview those three and you choose whichever one, you know, works best in terms of a culture fit. OK, so I've made this super automated and streamlined process that ensures, you know, you just get a good VA, right? Cause you don't want to just hire anyone who's a virtual assistant when it comes to appointment setting. Like this role requires a little bit of competency. Okay. So here is kind of an overview of the process. I'm going to be walking you guys through it. We basically source applicants from online jobs, PH, you know, we make a job post, uh, if they use the correct subject line, which I'm going to show you guys how to do that, it will automatically send them a can response. Um, and then once we get them into the can response, it sends them the phase one email. This is a test. If they pass the test, they move on to phase two email. If they pass this test, they move on to phase three, which is the interview. If they pass the, if they pass the interview, we put them through a training document, then two shadowing sessions. Don't worry if this is confusing. I'm gonna walk you guys through the entire process. I promise you it's one of the most efficient hiring processes when it comes to hiring and training appointment setters that only cost you $3 an hour. Okay. So step one, 
you're going to set up a go high level hiring pipeline. So the first step of the process is creating a pipeline inside of go high level to store applicants and keep track of which stage of the hiring process each VA is at. The pipeline will also have automations that make the filtering process as streamlined as possible. This will also give you your own database of qualified virtual assistants that will make hiring more in the future extremely fast and simple. So first step is we're going to create a pipeline inside of go high level. It's going to have eight stages. Uh, so you can see all the stages right here. We have phase one passed, phase two passed, interview scheduled, in training, shadowing, hired, and unqualified. Okay, so that's the very first step. You're going to make a pipeline inside of go high level. Once you've done that, we can move on to step two. Uh, so step two is to create a job post on online jobs pH. So the next step is to basically start generating qualified applications for this pipeline. And my favorite place to do this is for, with for virtual assistants is online job pH. It only costs $80 a month. Not only does it allow you to source their database of unlimited virtual assistants, but they also give you three job posts per month, which generate hundreds of applications in a couple of days. Okay. And one of the reasons the platform is so great is because it's all Filipino virtual assistants, I'd say about 90%. And um, I'll show you guys is actually pretty cool is they give them tests, they give them an IQ test, and they give them an English test. And then they have an algorithm that sees if they cheated or not on those tests. So you can see right here, this is an 80 ID proof score. This means it was about 80% chance that that what she answered on her English and IQ test was correct and all the other information she gave them, right? So what you can do is not only do you have access to this database of a ton of amazing VAs. So like, look, if you wanted to come in here, you could say, hey, want someone full time, uh, you know, ID, right? Say their ID is greater than 70%. IQ score, say you want someone with 130 IQ. Boom. Say you want someone who is a C1 and they've tested for advanced in English. Very important if they're going to be sending DMs and having conversations with your prospects. Click refine search. Now we have access to this giant database. We can scroll through here. Um, we can look for someone who is, you know, oh, 260 an hour, right? Uh, e commerce, Amazon, Shopify, B2B appointment setter, right? 99% chance that what he said on his, on his uh, thing is correct. Right, you have a profile description uh, right here, 133 IQ, C1, advanced English, right? Um, and then you can also make job posts. So here's a job post I posted two days ago. It's gotten 82 applications, right? And any of those applications, I can click on their profile, see their IQ, see their English score, right? So what, what we're gonna wanna do though is it's much more efficient is posting a job post, okay? But if you did want, if you wanted to, you know, hand by hand source for a really good person, you can also do that. So having that database is also super nice. Uh, and if you wanted someone like a systems integrator to build out systems for your business, you could come in here, you could search up systems integrator. Oh look, solution engineer and system integrator, $6 an hour. You tell them that you want them to build you out some crazy onboarding system, they'll do it for $6 an hour, right? So it also comes in handy with that, but uh, like I mentioned for this specific role for the appointment setter, it's more efficient to create a job post. But when you pay the $80 a month, you get access to that database and you can message them individually as much as you want. But we can also make three job posts per month, okay? So this is a job template that we're going to use. You know, the title is appointment setter, so that's super straightforward. You know, you just go to this, again, as the title, you put appointment setter, and then, you know, type of employment, full-time, job description, okay? So for the job description, uh, basically, again, you guys can pause this and look through it. The, the only part that is important that I'm gonna explain is down here where it says how to apply. This is where we start, you know, doing a little bit of filtering, okay? So how to apply, these are basically the instructions. So we say, send an email to, you know, jackson at leadodyssey.io. You guys will put your email with the subject line, appointment setter for, and then you wanna put your company name. So appointment setter for Lead Odyssey, and this is the first level of filtration. So what this does is, in the instructions, we're telling them to send their application to this email with a specific subject line. And anyone who doesn't use this subject line will automatically be filtered out with this automation. Because anyone who doesn't put that subject line, they, they, they don't uh, pay attention to instructions or they, they can't follow instructions, they don't pay attention to detail, so we're automatically starting to filter people out, right? And everyone's that, everyone that's automatically left we know that they're much more likely to be able to follow our SOPs, to pay attention to detail, right? So this is the first automatic filter that we set up, okay? And then we say, you know, please include a link to your online jobs.ph profile within the first email when you apply. 
complete the Google form you will receive in an email. See note below, okay? So this is the next level of filtering, so in the note below. So again, if they read instructions clearly, they're gonna, they're gonna say see note below and they're gonna read this. Or, you know, if they're just spamming out a ton of job posts or if they're not reading the full instructions, they're gonna get filtered out by our system, okay? So the note says, after you send the email to apply, you will receive a response from me with a link to a Google form. Please complete the questions in the Google form in order to be considered for this position. Forms that are not completed or only partially completed will not be considered. In the form, you'll be asked your age. Answer 42 to prove you're paying attention to detail. I look forward to working with you, okay? So this is the second form of filtering. So what we're gonna do is one, we're gonna set up an automation that only accepts the applicants who use this exact subject line. So appointment setter for Lead Odyssey, everyone who uses that exact uh, subject line, we know that they're not just spamming every single job post that we see, they know that they at least read this much of the instructions, right? So everyone who puts that subject line will automatically be sent an email with a Google form. And then at the very end, we said, answer 42 for the age question, right? So then we're gonna set up another automation that only uh, only sends us the people who answer 42 for the job application. Or sorry, it only puts the people into the pipeline who answer the, and this alone, oh my gosh, guys, it's gonna filter out so many people who aren't as serious, it's actually insane. Uh, it's gonna filter maybe like 50% of everyone who's interested in the job post. This right away is gonna save us so much time and really help narrowing it down to the best applicant, okay? You guys are gonna think this is cool, it's, it's, it's pretty awesome. Uh, so step four, this is to actually send them the phase one email. So this is what we're gonna to send to everyone who actually puts the correct subject line, okay? So within minutes of posting the job post, you're gonna start receiving applications via email and through your online jobs PH inbox. Uh, so they'll all be sent to your email, but you can also kind of read them inside of here. Um, and you can actually like, right? So you can see everything in here and you can respond to them. This same exact thing will also be sent to your email, okay? So I just like doing it in my email because we're gonna set up an automation. So I'll kind of explain that in a second. So if online PH jobs, when you're setting up your account, make sure that you allow them to send the applicants to your email for this automation to work, okay? So basically, you know, I've created two emails called phase one and phase two. They each send them a Google form and each of these Google forms will help us filter down the applicants until the best candidates are left. And the first email will see if they read the full instructions on the job post and they're gonna prove if they have fast internet because again, you know, slow internet, slow computers, these all equal slow work. Um, and this will eliminate those who don't pay attention to detail, spam every job post and have slow internet, which again, would result in slow work. And you know, so we're gonna create what's called a can response that automatically sends them this email to everyone who uses the correct subject line, okay? So you guys can come in here, you can copy this email. What you're gonna do is you wanna go to your Gmail, you're gonna wanna come here, you're gonna wanna paste it, Okay, and then what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna want to create your own Google form. Uh, so I'll walk you guys through the Google form in a second, but first I'll show you how we set up this automation. So you know, you just wanna make sure your own Google form is here, which I'll show you how to make in a second. So you know, hey, thank you so much for applying and for doing so correctly. You wouldn't believe how many people screw this part up, so you're off to a great start. Now you can advance on to the next phase of the application process. Please complete the following Google form within 24 hours. Your time starts now, then we put the Google form. After completing the form, I will review your response and contact you with the instructions for the next step. I understand this may seem like a lot for an interview. Please understand this is to showcase we're not looking for someone who simply wants another job. We're actively looking for a new employee who is ready to grow with a sustainable company over the next few years. Looking forward to speaking with you, Jackson. Um, and then in, make sure to change this so it's not blue text. Uh, so we'll go to this, cool. And then you can make the subject line, you can make it um, uh, lead odyssey phase one, right? So we can just call it and put your company name, don't put lead odyssey, right? Just put lead odyssey uh, phase one. Um, and then what we're gonna do is you're gonna come down right here to this draw, or sorry, this these three arrows right here. You're gonna go to templates. You're gonna create a template. You're gonna click save draft as template. So you click this, um, templates. You're gonna do save draft as template. You're gonna click save as new template and you're just, and just automatically gonna name it what the subject line is. Don't change this or we'll change the subject line. You're just gonna click save, okay? So now what we have is we've templated this. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to this filter button right here, okay? And you're gonna make the subject and you're gonna 
go to your job post, right? So in the job post, we put appointment setter for lead odyssey. You're gonna copy the exact subject line that you told them to put, okay? So in subject, we're gonna paste this, appointment setter for lead odyssey. Um, and then you're gonna click create filter, uh, okay? And then what you're gonna do now is send template. So you're gonna check send template. You're gonna click choose template. You're gonna choose the one that you just created, okay? So you're gonna choose phase one or lead odyssey phase one application. You choose that you click create filter. Now, every time we get an email application with the correct subject line, it's automatically gonna send them this email with the Google form for phase one, okay? So again, guys, we're automating the process. Only the people who followed the first instruction get sent the phase one form. And then once they actually open the form, which I'll show you guys what that looks like right now, basically says, we want the best, is that you? Hey, I'm Jackson, the founder of Lead Odyssey, but you've gone through enough job applications where employers just talk about themselves, so let's get to the important part. I'm currently looking to build a team of lethal appointment setters who can send messages to qualified leads, educate them on our offer, and get them on our calendar. We will provide you with extensive paid training before the job begins. We are looking for someone who is familiar with appointment setting or a fast learner. Please fill out the form to see if you qualify, okay? So they've already sent in their first application. If they did the subject line correctly, they got sent this email automatically, thanking them for doing it correctly, uh, pushing them to this Google form. And what this Google form does is it asks them for their email right away so we can keep track of who's who. Uh, it asks them for their first name again so we can keep track of who's who. Do you have your own 64-bit computer? So they'll put yes or no. Uh, are you currently employed or do you have ongoing projects? They'll put yes or no. Uh, do you have a social media, Facebook and LinkedIn? If, show, uh, if so, please share below. I actually give them my Facebook and LinkedIn because I want them to go and look at those. And if they see that I've been posting a ton of case studies, a ton of content, they're gonna be more excited to work for me, right? Like if you wanna attract the best employees, you have to sell them on your vision. And it's very hard to sell them on your vision if you don't actively have stuff going on, right? So that's the only reason I put that there. It's not that you can't get good applicants without you know, selling them on your vision, but it's just that's just the reason I put it there. Uh, you know, Social media links, if none, leave blank. Are you able to commit three to four hours per day? We're asking them, right? Just making sure, and then what's your age? So this is where the trick question is, right? So we don't really care what their age is. We're just looking for people who put 42, right? Because in the end of the job application, we said answer 42 to prove you're paying attention to detail. Uh, so basically, you know, you put what is your age and then you have part two, okay? So part two says, for the next question, you'll need to install Loom into your browser. We understand that in the Philippines, internet might not always be the best. However, a constant and above basic speed is necessary to work with us. So click here to install Loom, click here to check your speed. And what we're doing is we want them to film a Loom video. So please use Loom to screen record your internet speed using live speed tests and submit the Loom recording below. Right, so we want them to open up speedtest.net, record Loom, and and watch themselves actually doing a live internet speed test. Because a lot of people in the Philippines, they just won't have good internet. You want them to be able to prove to you that they have good internet. That's what's going to make them a really good employee because they're going to be able to make get the work done faster. That's not the only thing, obviously, but again, this is something that we want to start filtering out early on. Okay, uh, so so this is the phase one uh, Google form, and then what we're going to do, and this is again where we're leveraging automations is and you're gonna want zapier for this you can just have you know the 30 dollar a month plan again guys you want to be leveraging code okay so if you're scared to spend it well you're scared to leverage use leverage in your business okay uh, so you're gonna want to use zapier for this and the automation that we're going to use is it's going to trigger when a new response is happens in Google Forms. OK, so you're going to want to connect your Google Forms. You're going to want to choose the, you know, the phase one form that you've just created. Um, and then again, guys, in this document, I have an example of this actual uh, first form. So, you know, you can click on it right here and copy it, make your own. Um, once you go to this app, you want to hit continue. You know, if you guys have used Zapier, you know, you need to send a test lead in. So once you've done that, then you're gonna create a filter in Zapier, okay? So this is the next action you create. What the filter is, is for the question, what is your age? It has to match exactly 42, right? Because in the job post, we told them to put 42 as their as their age. So if they don't put 42, they didn't follow the instructions, okay? And then, do you have your own 64-bit computer? 
if they they have to answer yes to this too and then are you able to commit three to four hours per day monday through friday they have to answer yes to this as well okay so only if they won and put 42 for age say yes to having their own 64-bit computer they're able to work three to four hours per day that's the only way the automation will continue okay so this is one of the, again this is what a part of the automated filtering system okay and then what it does if they match all of that is it adds or creates an opportunity in lead connector so if you guys don't know what lead connector is it's basically just go high level inside of zapier so the next one is add or update an opportunity continue you want to connect your go high level account and then what you want to do is you want to input the first so you want for the first name of the contact inside go high level you know you want to map out the first name from the google response for the email you want to map out the email from the google response right so remember we asked for their email uh, so you want to map that out using this okay um, and then tags i recommend just adding a tag for va because they're going to go into the contact section of your go high level account so you want to know who's a va and who's a lead right unless you just create a separate sub account but i would still recommend just adding a tag that's va so you know and then for notes right oh and you have to put mark as lead you just have to put this as true or else this app won't work it doesn't mean it's actually a lead you just have to do it don't worry about that and then what we do for the notes is we put internet speed loom and then we put we map out the link to the url right so right here we have please use loom and then what it will do when you map this out is when they send us the link of the loom video it will automatically put it in the note section inside of go high level for their contact okay and then social media url we can also have it map that into their note side of their contact right so again we want to stay organized we want to quickly be able to sift through all these different leads okay so you guys see how this is hyper efficient it's super automated and there's all these automated filtering systems okay and then you want to select the pipeline so the pipeline is virtual assistants that's the one that we created in step one and then we want them to get zapped into the phase one past okay um so we'll go to this we'll click continue uh and then we can click test action okay and then we can go we'll let this test um and then we'll go to the pipeline and you can see right here so it looks like it accidentally sent it into phase two past so again that's why you always test it so now we can just go and troubleshoot it so we can go to here uh, and we can go to uh, qualify. Oh yeah, and then we'll just change the pipeline stage to phase one past, uh, and then we'll try to test it again. So we'll test action one more time just to make sure that, that whatever just happened was fixed. Um, and test action, um, we'll go back. Um, okay, so it looks like it worked. Is there, yeah. So again, guys, what's gonna happen now is everyone who answered um everyone who who filled out the questions correctly they're going to get filtered into the pipeline right so now where we're at with this whole process is we've made a job post uh we've asked them to use a specific subject line only if they use the specific subject line will they get sent to this email with this google sheet and then once they fill out this google sheet unless they if they have to put 42 for the age like we asked they have to be able to commit three to four hours per day and they have to have their own 64-bit computer only after that will they get zapped into in, into the pipeline right so now the only people that are hitting the pipeline have already gone through multiple stages of filtration right because we only want to make sure that we're getting the best possible applicants so up until this point we've already done more filtering than most people do in in their super manual hiring process okay um and then so again guys you can look at the, the google forms in here you can make a copy do whatever you need to do okay so the next step is sending them the phase two email okay so everyone who's passed so far automatically they're going to be sent into the phase one pass stage of the pipeline so all of them will be in here you should have maybe you know 50 applicants 50 to 100 applicants if it's been like 24 hours uh you want to kind of let this happen you want to let 24 hours pass between the time you make the job post and move on to phase two um and now what we're going to do is we're going to create another zap or a high level automation that is triggered when someone has moved to phase two. OK, so we're basically going to create a new automation that when we drag someone from here to phase two, it automatically sends them an email. You can do this in high level. I just did it in Zapier again because I don't really like go high levels email. Uh, so I just again, I want to keep it all a part of Gmail because that's where everything's kind of been happening up until this point. So, you know, you make the trigger pipeline stage changed and lead connector. You make it the you make it the stage virtual assistants move to stage and then you make it uh, phase two. OK, so then as soon as someone gets moved to phase two, we make the next action Gmail send email. Or you can just do this in high level again, 
Two, you know, you map out the email that's in their contact and high level. You know, you choose the email you want to send it from. Uh, I just make the subject appointment setter phase two. And then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to copy this email template. So, hey, first name. And this time we can use their first name because it will be inside of high level. So you can automatically have it. So right here, I mapped it out with first name. I have reviewed your job application and the responses that you submitted. You've done very well and made the list of applicants that will proceed to the next step of the application process. I'd like to invite you to answer a few more questions to help me decide. Here's the final Google form where you can place your answers and then you put the Google form. Uh, so I'll go right here and copy phase two Google form. Um, and we'll just put that right here. Um, please complete and submit this form within 24 hours. Thanks. Okay. So what this email does is what we're going to do is you're going to spend a little bit of time for phase two is you're going to go through everyone who's been sent to phase one. You know, you're going to click on their name in the note section. You'll have a link to one, the loom video of their internet speed and their social media URL. Okay. So what you want to do is kind of take some time to go through all these people, see who actually has good internet. Uh, you know, ideally at least above, you know, probably above like, man, eh, like 50 to hundred megabytes speed minimum. You want to look for that. You can also look at their online jobs, pH profile, and you kind of want to do a little bit of filtering, right? So this is where you do need to do a little bit of manually filtering is you want to actually watch the videos. They should only be like 30 to 60 seconds of the internet speed. Everyone who has good internet speed, you know, everyone who you looked at uh, their online job profile, they look good. You want to start moving them to phase two. And as you move them to phase two, it's going to send them out this email that gives them the, the phase two uh, uh, Google form. So this is the phase two Google form. This is so important. I can't stress doing this enough. This is the last piece of kind of filtration and show you guys what this form looks like. Lead Odyssey appointment setter phase two and a little bit of copy here, right? Nothing too crazy. Wow. There's a phase two. We get it. There's a lot more to this interview than what most people would be willing to put up with. We're, we're not here to make your life more difficult, but rather to make our work together easier. We're only looking for people who truly want the job, can follow instructions, match our vision, and most importantly, book appointments. Phase number one tested your ability to follow instructions and pay attention to detail in which you passed. This phase number two test will give you a quick task related to the appointment setting role. Please follow the instructions and complete the task. So again, we asked them for their email really quick to keep track of who. Um, and then the next part is, you know, what this is, is we're giving them a test related to appointment setting because there's going to be a lot of people who have even made it this far who don't have any experience doing this kind of stuff. They're not going to make it past this point. So again, one more filtration system. Okay. So what this is, is we're going to have them actually source leads and see how they do. So quality lead sourcing final test. Please give me the Instagram profile URLs of three qualified real estate agents. And then you tell them what a qualified profile has. So a thousand plus followers, consistent posts, posts of active homes for sale slash listings or real estate related achievements. And then you can say in the United States, preferably Florida, Texas, or Georgia. When finished, include the URLs in a Google Doc and share it in the question below. So the purpose of this task is to see how they complete it. Okay, so we want to make sure that they can they can follow instructions even more. So what we want them to do is go on Instagram and look for and obviously, guys, you want to change this to your niche, right? So if you're in uh, the, the car detailing niche, you want to change it to car detail. And what we do is we're giving them what we consider a qualified profile. We're going to have them go source it for us, but you'll notice there's a couple of things in here that again, see how well they can really follow instructions. So we say that we want it to be with people in the United States, but then we say preferably Florida, Texas, and Georgia. Why? Because these are better markets, right? And what we want to see is we want to see if they're doing the, the bare minimum or if they're going the extra mile, right? So those who do the bare minimum, they're going to just do any agent in the United States, but those who are, who go the extra mile, they're going to give us leads that are in Florida, Texas, or Georgia. So that's the first, you know, kind of little test in here. But then also we say, when finished, include the URLs in a Google Doc and share it in a question below. So there might be some people who just paste the links in here. Again, they didn't follow instructions. We told them to put it in a Google Doc. So there's a couple of tests in here and you're actually seeing how well they do. It's a very small task, but you're seeing how well they're going to perform when it comes to doing the actual job. So this is, you know, this is the final test. This is phase two. And then again, you know, everyone who you move to phase two will be sent an email with that application. Um, and then what you're going to want to do is this will filter out a ton of people on its own. So wait like, you know, 24 hours, you'll come to this, you'll go to responses, 
you'll maybe see like 10 to 30 people, maybe probably around 10, a lot of people are going to be filtered out by this. Um, and that, you know, so you again, you're letting you're letting this natural elimination process run its course. Um, and then and then what you're going to want to do is go through all the applicants of phase two. And you know, you want to kind of put a little bit of effort to seeing how they did in terms of the task. Uh, did they go the extra mile? Did they do the extra states? And then again, guys, you want to kind of customize this to your niche. You just want to give them a task that really tests to kind of see how well they'll do. Do they go the extra mile? Do they choose the people in the three states that you, you mentioned would you would prefer? Little things like that, right? Did they put all the URLs in a Google Doc? Did they match all the points that you consider being a qualified lead? Again, you just want to give them this little mini test, right? To really make sure that they're up for this specific role. Um, and then what you want to do is you want to look through all of those applicants. Again, this will filter out a lot of people automatically and you want to review the work, right? And then you want to pick two to three people from this stage and you know and what you want to do is you want to invite them to an interview um so you again you want to use this little template right here you'll want to just send them this manually so you know hey you can say their first name too we'll add that in so we'll do you know hey um first name um right we want to be personal they've made it this far <laughs> so hey first name congratulations for doing such a good job with the appointment setter application you are one of my final three candidates and then obviously you know if you have four or five candidates you just you would put that there you want to tell them the truth i would like to schedule a zoom interview with you to help me make my final decision when would you be available please reply to this email with your best day and time or just use the calendar link below and then you can give them a calendar calendar link I'm uh, and then this says I. I'm gonna say I'm. <laughs> I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward to chatting with you. Uh, thanks. Uh, and then oh, actually it was right before. That's my bad. I look forward to chatting with you. Oops. Yeah, I look forward to chatting with you. Thanks. Okay. And then, guys, if they've made it this far down, kind of the the uh, qualification process they're normally going to be pretty good. The, the main point of the interview, to be honest with you, is to see how they are as a person, to see how you guys get along with each other, to really see if there's more of like a cultural fit and see if you think they would be good in your company. Because if they've made it this far, they're normally a really, really, really good, you know, qualified applicant. You still just want to get on this call and kind of see if there's a culture fit, if you guys get along as people. And you'll kind of just, by asking them all these questions, you'll kind of just get a gut feeling on who's going to be best for you. So, you know, you can pause the video. You can look at some of these questions. It's not like there's very specific meaning behind them. Again, it's just to see if, if they're good. Like once they've made it through this process, they're normally going to be a good fit. It's really for you to see who would be best in your company based on like human traits, right? So you might just take the call and you get along with one person way better than all the rest, right? You'll want to hire them. Okay. So that's really what it's for is to see more of the human and connection side of things. So, you know, you want to get on an interview with them just letting you guys know a lot of VAs they really like Skype um, I don't know why but they all really like Skype uh, so they might want to do the interview on Skype so just kind of be cognitive of that um, and again guys you'll like these that these in this interview will give you all the context you need to make a final decision and then you can make your decision right and maybe you want to hire two VAs right uh, if, if, if you if you can afford it like you might as well just hire two right uh, so maybe you want to hire two VAs maybe you only hire one and then Okay, so now you've chosen, you know, your one or your two VAs, and we're going to move on to step seven, which is very important. It's giving them access to training material. Now you're going to pay, you know, your VA or your VAs to go through a training course. And it's your job as the founder to create this course. It should include video content on your company's culture, why people buy your service, how to prospect on Instagram, how to prospect on Facebook, how to use the tracking sheet, how to handle objections over DM how to troubleshoot campaigns and you know anything else you want your VA to be trained in, you should put it in this course. So if you want them to be trained in managing your cold email account, you should put it in this course, okay? And you can build this out inside a Notion or you can use Go High Level's membership feature, right? So Go High Level actually has this feature where you can build courses. Um, and if you don't make a course for whatever reason, which is not advised, I highly recommend making your own course. But at the least, at least send them like 
very specific YouTube videos to go over that talk about, you know, Facebook or Instagram prospecting. Okay. But I recommend creating your own course that shows them the process that's, that's been working really for, well for you in terms of your niche, in terms of your offer. Um, that's going to be the best way to do it. And you also want to make videos on how to troubleshoot your specific campaigns. Uh, and you really want to tell them why do people even buy your service, right? You want them to have as much context as possible when they're going out and setting appointments. Okay. So like, here's an example of what one of these you know, the training document might look like I create mine in notion. Uh, so it's, you know, it's this notion file that they all get access to. Uh, there's a quick two minute video showing them how to use this resource, uh, you know, lead odyssey service and mission, uh, Facebook outreach workflow. Uh, so, you know, right here we have hour and five long minute video, just going through a document. There's also some written content right here on it. Um, and then if you go back, you know, we have Instagram outreach workflow. So again, right here, we have an hour and 17 minute training on it. Um, and then also again, you know, we have some written content right here. Just make sure they really understand, you know, your process when it comes to outreach, uh, handling objections over messenger, troubleshooting campaigns, daily reporting and KPIs. Oh, and I recommend giving them a tracking sheet like this. So this is the tracking sheet that we use. Uh, and it's, it's pretty complex. I really like it. Um, and what it does is it's, it's not only a tracking sheet, but it's also kind of a CRM. Okay. So like when I have them doing outreach, they'll basically come in here and they'll put, they'll put the person's name that they've just messaged. And then what they'll do is they'll click on the name and they'll click link and they'll actually give the link of, uh, I just put the link of the spreadsheet, but they'll actually put the link of the person's profile or URL. And you'll notice it automatically put a timestamp right here, right? Uh, so it automatically logs a timestamp when they do it. I don't know why I just dragged them all the way down there. Uh, so we'll do this Jackson Williams and then look, it'll actually highlight it red. If it's, if it's inputted, if the same name gets inputted twice, uh, it should highlight it red. Maybe it didn't. Um, but you'll see it automatically put a timestamp right here and then they can go to status. If they connected with them on Facebook, they can just click it right there. Um, this allows them and sometimes it glitches like this, but this allows them to keep track of every lead. And then whenever they want to send a lead a follow up, all they'll do is go right here, they'll click followed up. Uh, and then you know, whenever they need to send follow up to they'll go here, they'll click follow up to, uh, you know, say they send a calendar link, they'll put that there, right? Uh, say they book a call, they'll put that there. And then if and then it automatically highlights it green once they book a call, right? And then if they mark them as disqualified, it automatically highlights them red. So it also acts as kind of a CRM. But and like, look, you'll see it puts a timestamp of when the calendar link was was sent, right? So we hide this column uh, when follow up to is sent, right? So it automatically puts a timestamp of when follow up to is sent. Um, and then so they kind of use it as a CRM, they can keep track of who they need to send, you know, a follow up to make sure that every lead gets sent a follow up. If someone gets sent a calendar link, make sure that they know to go back and follow up with them. Uh, if someone books a call, they can mark it. And then if we close the deal, we'll tell the VA, they'll mark it as closed deal, they get an alert in our discord channel. And then what this does is it goes to this KPI section. And there's all this automated stuff, right? So whatever number you want them to hit, uh, this is supposed to be on 300, not 30 and 150 follow ups. So I actually have to go ahead and fix that. Uh, but once they hit 300 DMS, it will automatically check these boxes off, right? And then we can see how many days they hit their KPIs when they hit 150 follow ups, it'll automatically check this box, we can see how many days they hit their follow up. And then it shows each day how many DMS they sent how many booking links they sent how many calls they booked. Uh, and you can really track their performance each month. And then some of my VAs, I have them go and add value in groups, uh, make group posts, group comments, drive attention back to my profile. And you know, and, and then we can see how many days they did that what the increase in appointments was, and then it kind of reports all the main metrics back to here, right? So, so you can see it already started reporting it and it's, it's kind of cool how the formulas work. So you can look, this is a very long formula. It will tell you how many follow-ups they sent on each date. So all they do is they use this as like a regular CRM and then it, it reports everything back to here based on the date, what they did. And it's, you know, it's, it's kind of fancy. Uh, this took a very long time to make. And then I also created a Zapier report. Okay. So what this does, and you'll see this one is locked is it's a database of like every day for the rest of the year. And then there's a formula 
to pool um okay here it is it's a formula to pool how many outreach was sent on this date and then there's a formula to pool how many total follow-ups were sent on this date and then there's a formula right here that's today's date right and then what it automatically does is in here it displays how many dms were sent on this date on today's date and then how many follow-ups were sent on today's date and then what it does is zapier it pulls these two columns and it sends it into our team discord channel so it says how many dms and how many follow-ups were sent by each va for the day okay um, and then we're also creating out a dashboard right now so we can see how their performance is improving month to month right because we want to be tracking their performance we want to make sure it's improving so i recommend creating some type of tracking resource like this um, and, and it, it, it will it will really help uh, when it comes to improving the performance of your VA helping them keep track of leads but also helping you see how much money they're making you see how many appointments they're booking you what the conversion rate is etc okay so that's what you know the tracking sheet looks like this is what the training source looks like and what you want to do is you know once you've gotten down to this VA is you want to put them through this training course okay and it should the you know the quality of the training course will really determine the results that your VA gets while they're doing cold outreach and depending on the size of your course they should be able to finish the training material within 2 to 3 days and if you want this is totally optional you can create like a 10 question Google form quiz and you can give it to them after they complete the training. And then if they don't get more than, if they get less than an 80%, you can say, hey, you know, I think it's a good idea if you just go back to the training one more time. And that's totally optional. You don't have to do it, okay? So once they've gone through the training, the last step, and this is very crucial, is shadowing sessions, okay? So like honestly, this is the most important part of the training process. I see people, they say that their VA isn't booking any calls. They've never put them any through any shadowing sessions. They probably didn't even put them through any training. Like there's people, they just hire a VA, they tell them what to do and they think that's enough. It's not, okay? So you have to put them through this training program that you create or you send them the YouTube videos if you're lazy. Um, and then the next step is to conduct shadowing sessions, okay? So you can give them the best training material in the world, but nothing will accelerate their learning more than shadowing sessions, okay? So I'd recommend scheduling two hour long shadowing sessions. The first shadowing session will be you executing the daily workflow. So it's basically, you know, if you have them on Instagram and Facebook, it's you literally doing the workflow that they'll be doing. If you have them reporting to a tracking sheet, you know, you'll be using the tracking sheet live. You'll basically just be doing what they're going to do live on a call for an hour, you'll be explaining why you do each step and, and your, your, you know, your thinking behind the decision making processes. Um, and then that will be the first shadowing session, which is an hour long will they where they watch you. And then the second shadowing session is where you watch them live for like an hour, two hours, and you watch them live as they do the process for the first time. And if they're making any mistakes, you want to correct them right on the spot. And they're likely to make mistakes. Like that's what you have to understand. That's why these shadowing sessions are so good is you can just correct them on those mistakes before they even start happening, you know, when they're on their own. Uh, so those are the two shadowing sessions. This is really crucial for, again, this you have to put them through these two shadowing sessions. One, they wanna watch you do it live, and then two, you wanna watch them do it live. And then between those two shadowing sessions, you know, they'll normally be ready to really go out on their own and start booking a ton of calls, okay? So after this, you should have a highly trained $3 an hour appointment setter, and you still need to manage and continue to train them. Now, I can make a whole nother hour long piece of training on, you know, how to track their time, how to pay them, uh, you know, how to manage them, how to continue training them. Um, but I don't want this video to get too long. This is just kind of how to source, filter, and hire them and train them. Um, but Here's just a couple bullet points to kind of, you know, help you guys when it comes to managing them. So one, you want to have five to 10, five to 10 minute check-in calls at least every other day. I'd recommend doing it every day. This is just so you can kind of stay active, stay in communication with them. Uh, you Maybe you can review one conversation each day that booked a call or didn't book a call and you can kind of show them what to do differently. Again, you just want to stay in contact with them so you can see any problems that are happening. Uh, if, they're, if they're having trouble with a specific issue, you can talk about it on that call uh, just to kind of stay in the loop of things. Uh, and then the next thing, okay? So 
don't expect them to know everything about your niche and you need a plan for continuous training. Uh, a few training videos will not turn them into an expert, okay? So I see people who they think that just putting them through a course and the VA will be an export. That's not the case, okay? You have to understand that it's going to be a continuous learning process for them, um, but they're very loyal, okay? So if you're, if, if, if you're you know, willing to keep them, they'll get very good at what they do and they will stay with you, okay? But you have to kind of have the expectation of knowing uh, that just putting them through a training course isn't gonna be enough. Okay, you, you need to let them uh, really be in the field for a certain amount of time. Um, and again, you want to, you know, and then again, so next bullet point is incentives, incentivize them with closed deals or appointments and watch their performance triple. Okay, so incentives run the world like Charlie, Charlie Munger says. And so if you guys... You can pay them three dollars an hour. You can. They're still gonna book a decent amount of calls. But you like it's so funny, bro. You 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 can either one. You can incentivize them. Say hey, you know, I'll give you ten dollars extra per book call. Or hey, I'll give you five percent of a deal that we close they'll start booking three times the amount of calls that they were, right? Because if you just pay them per hour, they're not incentivized to really go the extra mile and book calls, where you as the business owner, you're incentivized to book calls, right? So if you really want them to book as many calls as possible, pay them an extra $10 per book call, right? And it's gonna, you're gonna get three times the amount of appointments from the same VA. So it's 100% worth paying them that extra bit of money to get three times the amount of output and you make it back, right? It's like every 10 calls, uh, at scale, you should be making at least a thousand to two thousand dollars back, right? So it's a hundred percent worth it. Okay, um, and then next bullet point is check in with them, see how they're doing with their personal lives. Okay, don't just talk about business, don't just talk about their training, uh, don't just talk about you know their role in your company. Ask them how their kids are doing. Ask them how their day is going. Right, treat them like a real human. Okay, um, this one's huge. If they're doing a good job make sure to tell them, right? Uh, hard, like, you know, hard work shouldn't go unappreciated. And the, if you, if, if they do a really good job, you want to make sure to let them know, right? And then naturally they're going to want to keep doing a good job. So they keep getting, uh, you know, they keep getting approval from you. Uh, so you, whenever they do a good job, you really want to tell them, make sure they know. So, you know, great job. You know, you did an amazing job on this day. Uh, I'm super stoked. I'm super glad you're a part of our company, right? Only took you a couple seconds. It goes a long way and then lead by example. So, how can you expect them to show up to every meeting on time if you're not doing it yourself? How can you expect them to show up to a meeting every day if you can't even do it yourself, right? You need to become a leader, right? It's time to become a real business owner. Like I said, you need to become a leader and to be a good leader, you need to lead by example. Uh, and you need to be consistent with what you say. If you tell them that you're going to uh, give them a bonus in a couple months, you need to give them a bonus. Uh, if you tell them that, that you're gonna give them a day off, you need to give them a day off. If you tell them that they're, you're gonna incentivize them and you're gonna pay them at the end of the month, you have to pay them at the end of the month, okay? So you have to do what you say and you have to lead by example, okay? And then have them submit an end of a day report. So you can just create a Google form that says, you know, how many leads they reach out to, how many follow-ups, how many responses, uh, how many calls, how many calendar links, et cetera, right? Whatever main metrics that you wanna track, you can have them fill it out on a daily form and you can put it in your Slack channel or your Discord channel or you can set up a, a, a Zapier automation, kind of like I showed you. And then if you have multiple VAs, they're not doing daily reports. It's just automatically being sent no matter what. Um, and then people don't want to be the only person who has a low number, right? It's probably, honestly, though, it might be better to just have them submit a manual report because uh, it just requires effort. It, re it requires them to stay consistent, which is good. But you want to have them do some type of end of a day report. And you want that end of a day report to get shown in your public Discord channel or in your public Slack channel. So if you have multiple VAs, you want you want everybody to see that everybody is putting in the work and it gives you a good gauge of the of what's happening, you know, in the in the trenches of your business. Um, and I also recommend setting it up so that every time someone books a call with their calendar link, again, it automatically zaps an alert into the Discord or Slack channel. Again, this is for you, and it also kind of motivates everyone and shows that stuff's going on, okay? Um, encourage them to share their ideas on how they can improve your systems and processes, maybe even reward them for it, right? So you wanna create a culture where they're gonna be in the trenches every day. They're gonna notice ways that they can improve your script. They're gonna notice ways they can improve your tracking. They're gonna notice ways that, they, that you can improve your follow-up. You wanna create a culture where they are encouraged to tell you that what you're doing might not be the best way of doing it, okay? Because 
like it's really like it's very it's very there's a very low probability that you and you yourself are going to come up with a million amazing ideas right but there's a much higher probability that your team members and you combined are going to come up with really uh, uh you know hundred thousands of ma- amazing ideas okay so you want to but if you don't create this culture, your VA is going to be scared to step up to you and, and, you know, tell you that what you're doing might not be the most efficient way. So you want to create a culture where that's okay. And the easiest way to do this is reward them for it. If they come to you with a good idea, give them 20 bucks, give them 50 bucks, give them a hundred bucks, you know, if the idea is really good. Um, so you want to create that culture and this is going to really help your company progress because instead of just having one mind thinking of ideas, now you have multiple. Okay. Um, next bullet point. Give them a random $20 bonus. If they've been doing a good job, get in the hat, like $20 for them, guys, for you, that's like the price of lunch for them. That goes a very long way. Okay. So it's a hundred percent, a positive ROI of just giving them a $20 bonus. If they've been doing a good job, reward them for it. For them, it will go a very long way. It will build this really good relationship. Okay. So again, I'm probably going to make a video that goes deeper into like managing your VA and paying them and et cetera. It's just a whole nother topic. Uh, but this is my hiring process. This document will be available in the description. I think this is one of the best uh, hiring processes when it comes to uh, specifically hiring appointment setters. So if you got value from this video, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you.